All right. Welcome to Geek Grotto. I'm Casper Van Dien. I'm vi interviewing Ed Newmeyer for the new Starship Troopers, Trader of Mars. Geek Grotto. How does it feel to be back in the shoes of Johnny Rico and to bring back the Starship Troopers franchise? Uh, it feels outstanding to be in the shoes of Johnny Rico again in Starship Troopers, Trader of Mars. I, uh, it's 20 years since the original Starship Troopers, and it's 20 years in the war in the film, and my character is 20 years older, as I am 20 years older. I've got the battle scars in the movie to prove it. I have the real scars in life to prove it, too. But Ed, what was it like to write the new Starship Troopers, Trader of Mars? Well, it was actually a lot of fun, because I knew I was writing it for you and for Dina Meyer. And it was kind of surprisingly fun to return to these characters after a few years off. So this isn't the first animated feature, correct? It's the, it's the second animated feature. There was another one. Uh, we did, uh, they did Roughneck Chronicles. I, you well, there, was a, there was a show called Roughneck Chronicles on when, when the, movie, the original movie came out. Uh, then there was the... This was, this, there was a uh, feature before this called Invasion by the same team that we were only a little bit involved with. Was voicing the character easier or harder than physically acting out the character? Uh, well, you know, acting in the sound booth was, you know, I'm just bringing the voice of Johnny Rico alive, which was easy for me because this man writes Johnny Rico and, and he writes it with me in mind a lot. And, uh, and, he, and he knows me. He knows me well. So sometimes I'm reading it and I'm... You know, I'm questioning myself because I'm wondering what, it, what, he, what he's thinking when he writes the words that he has me say. But, uh, but it's, it's a, it was a lot of fun to do. I had to match my, my, my way of talking to another actor's mocap, which is always a challenge, but it was a lot of fun. It's exciting to be in there. It's exciting to bring this character to life. It's, it's exciting because people always yell at me. They go, Rico! And then they'll just yell some lines. So basically you go in a booth and you just yell some lines. And so I'm pretty good at that. So, Ed, this isn't your first Starship Troopers script, correct? No, I wrote the original Starship Troopers. I wrote the second one and the third one. I took a break on the fourth one, Invasion, uh, and then I came back to do this one. Would you both be open for a possible sequel? <clears throat> I, I would hope so. <laughs> I just can't say no. No, no I, I really enjoy the characters. I like the world. And uh, I'm very pleased that Sony uh, lets us keep coming back and doing another one. It's just fun for me because Ed Newmeyer not only did he write Starship Troopers, uh, the original, where he's known me for so long, but he also wrote RoboCop. So when I was on Starship Troopers, watch, looking over and watching this man on the, you know, uh, behind the monitor with Paul Verhoeven, who directed RoboCop and directed Starship Troopers, it was really amazing. And then we got, the, we we're fortunate enough now to work with Shinji Aramaki, who did the mecha suit designs for all these mechanized suits that we're wearing that we couldn't do in the first Starship Troopers, but now we got added into Trader of Mars, and it looks awesome. And he became what he is. He became the, me the number one mecha suit designer in the world because he saw a cover of Starship Troopers when he was a kid. Starship Troopers was originally written by Robert Heinlein. 1958. 1958. <laughs> Famous book. Uh, I remember when I was uh, writing it, I would say to somebody at a bar or at the copy shop, oh, I'm writing a, uh, an adaptation of the book Starship Troopers, and they would stop and they would look and they would go, oh, my God. Starship Troopers, that's the book that I joined, I joined the Marines because of that book. You know, so it was a book that people really knew about. It meant something to them, and it was kind of an honor to be able to adapt it. It used to be required reading for the Marine Corps. It still is required reading. It's required Marine, uh, Marine Corps reading. And, and uh, it's highly recommended by the Navy, uh, Air Force, and, uh, uh, and I think the, the, the Coast Guard as well. However, uh, Army may too. I am told that in any war zone in the, the United States is in, Starship Troopers, the movie, is playing 24 hours a day. Very popular with the, with the military. No, they kill bugs good. Are you guys enjoying San Diego Comic-Con this year so far? Uh, well, I love Comic-Con. I've been here since 1997. Uh, I came here for Starship Troopers originally with this guy and Paul Verhoeven, the director, and Phil Tippett and John Davison. We all were down here for that, but he came down here. You came down here a long time. You've been a fan of Comic-Cons for how many years now? I came here in 1988, right after RoboCop. 
uh, for the first time when there were still like comic book guys here, you know, and, and comic book art. You came down here to buy comic books or to meet your favorite comic book artist or something like that. You know, they're still here. I go over there. There's all the comic book guys are still here, but they're, they've been, they've been sort of, there's, it's become so much more massive now. So, and sometimes people, it's interesting because people don't know that they're like the reason people are here at a comic con. Well, it's a big boat show now, but we, we like it. Was the language barrier an issue since you guys are working primarily with Japanese directors? Um, you know, it, may, it meant that the, the meetings were the meetings could be a little longer because you'd have to wait for for trip. But not really. It was kind of the same problems that you have in any movie, and or the same situation, the same solution of problems. And so, no, it wasn't that big a deal. It's, I think that's universal because uh, movies are made all over the world and you get together with people, sometimes you don't speak their language and they don't speak yours, but it's the movie language and we make yeah. movies, it's what we do. And so there's a certain thing, uh, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to make a you shouldn't be able to make any movie, it shouldn't be able to be physically done because you get a whole bunch of strangers that don't know each other together in different positions and jobs and somehow you create whatever's on the pages and you make whatever that is into a product and it can happen in any language even without understanding it. I've shot films I, where I was a director in Bulgaria. I didn't speak Bulgarian, but we had translated and stuff. But sometimes you could just, people get it and they know it and you start, you start working together and it sort of gets done without even words being said. Each project, strangely, will you sort of develop your own language that's appropriate to that project, whether, even if, you, if you're all Americans, you're sitting and these kind of, we kind of have an understanding of what we're doing, it becomes second nature, and that's was the same here. And it's amazing because it's life, and you don't. You, everybody that's on the set, nobody has the same politics or um, personality, so it still gets done. Whether the Republicans, Democrats, liberals, you know, atheists, Christians, it doesn't matter. You know, Christians, Jews, Muslims, ninjas, 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 ninjas Buddhists, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. We still make the movies. It still gets done, and it's awesome. I have one last question. I got one more answer then. I don't know. He might have three. This is more of a personal question. We don't do personal questions. Well, that's too bad. Ah, oh, dang it. We have to take our clothes off again. Ah, man. Who do you think would be more scary and more frightening to deal with? The bugs or the aliens from the Alien series? Hmm. Well, you know, I must say, I think there's more bugs, so I'm a, I might be more afraid of them. I'm, not, I'm afraid of the alien. He's scary. But... I, I just kill them all. He doesn't make any, any difference. It's an equal opportunity. Yeah. Any good bug is a dead bug, and any xenomorph is kind of still looking at. But you know, in aliens, they had they they called them bugs. They said we were on a bug hunt, which is out of Starship Troopers, the novel. So, hmm, hmm. I'd have joined in there. I kill them good. Rico kills bugs good. Well, guys, thanks a lot for your time. You know what to do. Kill them all.